You know, looking across the food corner of the internet, there seems to be two main recipes for the famous carbonara sauce. There's of course the heavy Americanized cream laden version, but then there's also the supposedly traditional version, which almost puristically uses just eggs, cheese, and meat. Now that version is put together with a lot of care, precision, and skill. I don't really have skill, but I am particularly enthusiastic about trying Marcella Hazan's carbonara from the essentials of classic Italian cooking because it doesn't quite look like either of those recipes. It seems different. Marcella says that this sauce has an earthy flavor that is unmistakably Roman. She says that in Rome, they use salted pork jowl. However, in the recipe, she actually calls for pancetta or a substitute of bacon because she says pork jowl is just too hard to find outside of Italy. Well, thanks to the benefit of being a few decades on, I was able to pop down to my local Italian grocer and pick up some pork jowl or as it turns out, it's called guanciale. So admittedly, we're going a little bit off recipe today, but I feel like it's in a way that Marcella would approve of. So first we need to remove the rind. Oh, I feel like I should be saving that for something. That'll be a research project for another day. A pancetta wouldn't normally have all of these peppercorns on it, so I'm just gonna scrape a little bit off. So in the recipe, she calls for a slab of pancetta that is a centimeter thick and then cut into six millimeter strips. Our guanciale, of course, is a little bit different shape to that. And I'm sure she doesn't want strips that long. So I'm gonna try to recreate that. It's still about twice as thick. Any Italian who watches this, thanks for joining and feel free to have at me in the comments. So already feeling a bit out of my depth. So I'm kind of aiming for a sort of la don sort of thing. Now the recipe called for 225 grams. We'll see how much we've ended up with. Looks like we're nine grams under. I blame the peppercorns. Now we get four cloves of garlic and one for luck. And we lightly mash them with the handle of a knife. I'm, I'm just gonna use the knife. We discard the skin and maybe the little tail that this one sprouted. And we're over to the stove. So we're putting a pan over a medium high heat. We add three tablespoons of olive oil and in goes our garlic. Now we know Marcella loves her various golds. Today we're looking for a deep gold. I think that's about as gold as we can get until it's just brown. And now we discard. In goes our guanciale. And we're cooking this until it becomes just crisp at the edges. Oh, immediately you can smell this. This is amazing. Well, you can't. Sorry. Oh, so much of that fat is just rendering out. So it's turning crispy. So now we add four tablespoons of wine. Got a uh, pecorino wine, like the cheese that we'll be using. I feel like this is the weirdest ingredient in it. Whoa. I feel like this is such a weird ingredient in a carbonara, but hey, we have leftovers. Now we let it bubble away for one or two minutes. Shit! <laughs> Didn't even seem that smoky. And now we turn off the heat. So we're cracking two large, it looks large, two large eggs in a bowl. And beat them with a fork. I keep hallucinating that there's a bit of shell in here. Then we get some Pecorino Romano. Taste it for good measure. Oh. It's a little intense, but that is gorgeous. And we're adding four tablespoons worth. And you know, since tablespoons are a little inaccurate, eh, a little bit more. And 50 grams of our old faithful Parmigiano Reggiano. I wonder why the Pecorino wasn't in grams. And that's 55 grams. Well, I am okay with that. Now two tablespoons of parsley. Get those stalks out of there. Give it a chop. Hey, I got that pretty much exact. Now the last thing we need to add is a liberal grinding of pepper. Now I could just go get the pepper grinder, but I was thinking we've got all of this beautiful pepper from the guanciale. I reckon we use this. Mortar and pestle. I don't know where this came from and I don't know why we have it, but it's gonna be very handy today. And that is our liberal grinding of pepper. Now we mix it all up thoroughly. So it's time to boil our pasta, and Marcella says that it's difficult to imagine carbonara on anything other than spaghetti. As usual, minimum three liters of water, one and a half tablespoons of salt. I've lost my tablespoon. Mm. 
one and a half tablespoons of salt, and boil. Marcello asked for 550 grams of this stuff, which seems a lot considering there's only two eggs in that sauce. A lot of the recipes online have three or four for half this amount. We're nearly there at 500 grams, and I think that's gonna be plenty. Okay, now we'll test it. Mm, perfect. And we drain it into the eternally messy sink. Oh, 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 hot, hot, hot. And this is where the magic happens. I'm a bit scared to add all the pasta. This feels disproportionate. Okay, that's a good three quarters of it. We're gonna see how we go with that. Oh, it's thickening up. It's against my better judgment, but I think I'm gonna put the rest of the spaghetti in. Now, lastly, we need to give our guanciale a quick blast on high heat. And we pour the entire contents into the bowl. Toss thoroughly again. And that is our carbonara. Put it in my mm. face. Mm. Mm. I think that is different to any carbonara I've ever tasted. It's so good. It's peppery. It's got the herby. Have you tried a bit of the guanciale yet? It's crispy. And the pepperiness mm. gives it that kick. Mm. Holding it up in glory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think the traditional carbonaras, there's something beautifully simple about those ones. So I'm not knocking them in any way. This just feels like there's a bit more going on. It's not super eggy. It doesn't just feel like it's all about the egg and the meat. Like that olive oil is a substantial player here. You pointed it out to me and now mm -hmm. I can taste it. There's something smooth about this. Like buttery ice cream. I've made the traditional one before, but this is way more interesting. I think maybe it feels like a little more homely? Yeah, hmm. it's homely. It's a little taste of home. Maybe it's not what you'd find in a restaurant in Rome, but just at the family dinner table. I like that idea. No idea if that's true. Any Italians, comment down below. And I shouldn't have doubted Marcello. We did end up using all the pasta. Mm. I'm going to relax into this glass of wine, but would you like to sign us off? This is Cavanara with a kick. Sure is. Thanks for joining.